Hi guys, um, I'm Teja and I work at Finin in the marketing and growth team. And uh, today we have another Money Talk session with uh, Dr. John. Uh, Dr. John is a psychologist and UX designer based in London in the UK. He studied attention and uh, game theory at Oxford University and London University and has specialized in behavior change and financial well-being. Uh, John has worked with mainstream banks and your banks in the UK to help them serve their customers better. He's now working with Finin to build a world beating new bank. Um, over to you, John. Thank you, Teja. This is really kind. Um, so I'm just going to welcome to everybody for this like short session on what's your money type. So hopefully uh, by the end of this session, you'll be a bit more aware if you like of like, who you are in relation to money and uh, that can help you kind of change uh, your relationship with money uh, and feel better about your money overall um, and help you change some habits and so on. Um, and obviously, you know, working with Finin, we're kind of building a, honestly, it's going to be an amazing product. Um, so uh, it will really kind of give you that power boost uh, for when you, uh, with, with your finances. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, uh, we've got a bit of an agenda. It's going to take about, I don't know, 40 minutes, maybe max. And um, there's a few things to get through. So we'll have to like keep the speed up. Um, so it's about what's your money type and you. The first bit is really about getting to know you a bit, um, uh, getting to know a little bit more about you and what your bad habits are with money, uh, where you need some help. Um, so as part of that, we've got like a little interactive survey. Um, uh, so Teja will put the link in the chat um, and it's called kind of getting to know you. Um, and yeah. So the first bit is like getting to know you um, and we are just looking at your kind of money habits. So it's a little kind of upvote quiz. There are like 10 items here. Um, so Teja will, Teja will share the link. Uh, and then you can only choose three things. So have a look through the items uh, and vote for like three things you'd, you'd most like to change. This is just a kind of warm up exercise. So is it spending more than you earn? Paying bills late, that's a real problem. Hoarding money and never having fun because you're like a crazy saver. Um, making Ill impulse purchases, never tracking your spending, like literally hardly ever looking apart from when you get paid. Uh, not saving up for long-term goals. So just choose three of these things and then we can see kind of where where people's habits are lying and where the, the problem areas are in the group that have joined us today. So spending more than you earn is like top of the moment, using credit card to pay bills. That's quite brutal. Uh, not being prepared for emergencies. This is like something that I think everybody's got a little bit more aware of with the, like a global pandemic. Um, so yeah how much savings people have how can they long can they last or if they lose their job um something that's hit a lot of people hard impulse purchases paying bills late not saving for long-term goals no votes for that at the moment okay so We've got a set of money habits there. The main ones seem to be like not spending more than you earn. Um, I'm going to talk about like four different money types now. Um, the, uh, there are lots of different kind of personality tests uh, for your money types. And this is one particular personality test. And it's based on like an understanding of what your core beliefs are about money. Like what do you think money is important for? Uh, and there are kind of four core types. Um, so there's a, a kind of personality test we're going to do uh, to run through like what your, to understand what your core beliefs are and what your money, what money means to you. Um, the four types are like a saver, the free spirit, the celebrity and the provider. Um, now the way the test works is that um, you won't, you'll get like a dominant type, but you'd also get a kind of secondary type. So you could be like a combination of like a saver who's also a bit of a provider or a saver who's a free spirit and so on. 
Uh, the questionnaire is quite short. It's about 12 questions and so on. Um, so we'll just run through this together uh, and then like have a see uh, where, where people's dominant types are. Free spirit, we've got one free spirit. Two free spirits. I got the saver and the provider. Somehow I guess that, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll just like super quick talk about this. This is an idea of like financial well-being. So this is like, how do you, what makes you feel good about your money? And you basically feel good if you've got all of these four areas under control. So like you, you've nailed your needs your bills and living costs are sorted out you pay for them you pay for them on time it's fine um, you also have a little bit of extra money in reserve for tomorrow in case emergencies happen so those are your needs um, in terms of your wants if we all have wants as well beyond our needs so we want to go out and have fun like buying stuff so spending on things you like making sure that you have enough to do that so you don't feel as though literally all you're doing is paying bills uh, and, and then also just like saving for those bigger things in the future as well, whether that might be buying a home or getting married or, or whatever it is, or going on holiday. Um, so those are the kind of four areas. And if you can get all of those things in balance, um, then you generally feel much better about your money. Uh, money worries are like one of the biggest sources of stress that people have. Uh, causes all sorts of problems, causes relationship problems. Um, so getting your money in balance and, and taking care of these four areas is like really massively important, not just for your money, but also just for your kind of mental health. Yeah. So the saver, the saver is probably like the most sensible. You're always saving for a rainy day. So you're not cheap, you're frugal, you, you have plenty of money to spend, but you just don't like to waste it. My son is a saver. I give him some money and he just doesn't use it. And my other son is completely the opposite. Like I give him some money and like by the end of the day, he has no money. Um, so they're completely different, completely different personalities in terms of how they behave. So if you're a saver, you might say, well, it's important to save for a rainy day. You should always look for the best deal. If you can't pay cash for something, you shouldn't buy it. Um, I'd be a nervous wreck if I didn't have any money in reserve, yeah? You might live quite frugally, not make purchases that you see as unnecessary. Feel nervous that you don't have enough save for a future. Be constantly vigilant about your money. Be like checking, have I got enough? How much can I spend? Maybe you don't even use credit cards because you find them so dangerous. Now, the problem for the saver is that they, they forget about their, their wants to some extent. Uh, so they're really hot on the knees, but they're not so good on the wants. Um, so, you know, make sure you do have fun. Um, you can get, a, you know, perceived as being kind of stingy and, and like, you know, uh, like Scrooge like, you know, by other people. <laughs> so you know, another thing to be wary of. Um, but, you know, set a fun money budget, make sure you have a holiday or a new toy, spend money on something that's useful and so on. 
Uh, and so these are the kind of danger areas. You're so focused on savings that you forget to have fun. Uh, and then you also want to make sure you get the best returns on your hard earned savings. So make sure that money you have saved is being invested like in the right place and you're getting the best returns. Okay, free spirit. Um, you, you, money's just about freedom for you. It's not about security. So with the saver, it's all about security and safety. With the free spirit, it's all about freedom. Money is freedom. Uh, and uh, money's not going to get in the way. It just enables you to get freedom. So you can't take money to the grave. There's no point being the, you know, the richest man in the graveyard. Uh, you might as well enjoy it when you can. So celebrating something, let's spend some money, rounds on you. You can spend a lot of money on other people, on frivolous things, buying small things, just little things that make you happy. Um, it's just a means to an end for you to, to kind of spend money. Um, savers are not necessarily completely irresponsible. You know, often there's a lot of hustling behind the scenes um, and you know, they're, work, they're, they're working hard to, to kind of fund their spend habit, if you like. <laughs> So things you might say, I never have enough money. Um, more money will make you happier. Uh, money could solve all your problems no matter how big or small and money buys you freedom to do what you want. Money tips for free spirits are to kind of put some time between your impulse to buy something and purchasing. Um, so you can be particularly susceptible to kind of, uh, attractions of, of spending stuff on um, via social media uh, or online spending make time for yourself and people you love so don't think that everything is about money and money doesn't always kind of buy you things uh and uh it, it can feel good to give to others and giving should be budgeted for so kind of find things that give you freedom and satisfaction that aren't just about spending um this is the well-being stuff so overspending too much this is the the kind of danger for the free spirit and then like you probably don't think about the future so much so you're not putting money aside for unexpected bills not like um saving up for longer term goals and building up those savings and investments okay so celebrity did anybody get celebrity i didn't see any celebrities out there celebrity and free spirit are kind of similar but they have a slightly and you might be a combination of the both uh, a lot of people will have celebrity in there as a type. If celebrity is your main type, then money for you is like all about social status. It's about how other people see you. Uh, and so you may be like big into brands, mm -hmm. big into the latest thing. Uh, you need to be seen to, to have cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's very much more about status rather than freedom. Uh, you might have a taste for elegance, for fine wines, for champagne or something like that, or fine clothes. Uh, and you, um, you know, you're quite happy to spend money on those things because they're very important to you. So things you might say as a celebrity, I'm not going to buy something unless it's new. Uh, your self-worth equals your net worth. Uh, poor people are lazy. Uh, sometimes it's not considered the best if it's not, it's not worth buying. Um, money tips for you, you've got to slow down again and think about why you're buying an item. Do you really need that latest thing? Does it really have to be that designer brand? Spend some time discussing monthly spends with loved ones just so you get more aware of where you're spending your money and what you're spending it on. And, and try to be like emotionally, physically and financially healthy um, and don't look for that kind of hit just from buying a thing or something cool okay so that's celebrity again the big dangers are around the wants buying expensive stuff living beyond your means if you can track your spending understanding where it goes then that's super super helpful and again normally blinded about the future it's normally about being a celebrity in the here and now you're just going to shine uh, like a bright light in the now and maybe not think about the kind of longer term and being a celebrity in the future so last of all, we've got the provider. Provider is a very different type. Again, some people might have this as a secondary type. Money is all about giving and generosity. Um, so you would like buy things for people. You might, might buy drinks for people or pay for the meal or uh, buy elaborate gifts, uh, enjoy buying things for celebrations uh, or birthdays. Um, 
you're often seen as the parent or the carer in a friend group. Um, and you know, if people need it, like staff to help them out, you're always there to help and whether it's cash or just helping them out with other stuff. So it's better to give than receive if you're a provider. Uh, you, you can make a living by what you get, um, but the rest is all about giving and to other people and so on. Um, you can help everyone, um, but everyone can, can help someone. Money tips for you, you need to kind of also track how much you are actually spending on others. Um, so it's not com always completely healthy to give so much away. Make sure you do put money aside for yourself. Uh, and make sure you pay yourself first uh, by say setting up a savings goal and always putting money aside as soon as you get paid because you need to kind of start building up that that uh, that money so again the uh, for the provider the blind areas are not buying things that you never buying things for yourself and and thinking that other people's wants are your needs and they're not um, so you need to let other people be a bit more independent and also make sure you take care of yourself okay so we're going to finish this off with a few bad habits so hopefully like the the money ties gives you like a bit of insight into kind of who you are uh, and what's kind of driving your behavior and your habits so why you're what's triggering you to do need to feel free uh, whether it's a need to feel safe and secure uh, and whether it's a need to uh, feel important uh, or, or um, uh, more of a celebrity uh, or whether it's a need to kind of provide or give for others. the habit of looking away from anything money related that you might feel uncomfortable or anxious about under pressure. Now this can apply to any type really, but it's most common in the free spirit. So it's all about freedom. You want money for freedom, but you don't necessarily want to deal with the ins and outs of it. Um, so you prefer to ignore it as a problem that's going to go away or the celebrity as well, because you're so focused on kind of, you know, just being a celebrity that you don't really want to deal with this stuff. So the the thing is is if you're avoidant is that you need to just make sure you're constantly aware so whether that's like try and act as your own mom uh fill your own life up with appointments reminders to do this that even that's like check my balance check how much i've got check how much i've spent now without like a dedicated app this can be quite difficult to do but in the fit app we've got like spend notifications so you can literally track your spending and get notifications if you spend so much on a particular thing um when you've reached a spend limit you've reached a budget limit and so on you'll get an alert and so on so it helps you stop being avoidant and just become more aware of actually what's going on so you have to look at it Hesitant. Now, this is more like of a, a, a saver problem. So this is like, okay, not putting things off because you feel hesitant to spend any money. So you really are like holding on to money for dear life. I really don't want to spend it. Um, holding back from making a big spend. Even even if those are things that those things could be like core needs. Like I really do need a new pair of shoes, uh, and you're like wearing the same shoes. Uh, and they've got like holes in the bottom or like a, a new coat or something like that. Um, so at the super frugal end, you can get people who are just like, they won't actually spend money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One way to kind of release yourself from this is to just set up a, a goal, set up a savings goal, dedicating savings account, the things that you make. Now these could be needs or they could be wants as well. Um, uh, so that you won't have a hard time putting the trigger when it comes to kind of buying that thing. And again, like in the Finning app, we've got like budget and savings goals to help you kind of stop being hesitant, taking that fear away of spending. Okay, overconfident. Um, this is like just justifying spending, assuming that you're gonna be fine. You're like, okay, I get paid in like a few days, it's fine, I can spend like uh, 20,000 
or whatever. Uh, I put it on the credit card. It's going to be okay. I'll figure it out later on. Uh, this is a bit of a slippery slope. Um, and you need to be really careful, especially dangerous with the celebrity um, buying high ticket items or the free spirit, just not really kind of keeping track of it. So the best way to kind of overcome this is to actually make sure you just take, give yourself the money first, pay yourself first. Although you get paid, the, what most people do is they just spend it and they don't actually pay themselves again, like by putting some of that money into a savings account. So automate those savings so that you've really only got so much left. Uh, again, set up a savings goal, filling that makes it super easy. As soon as your salary goes in, that money goes into a savings account, makes it very easy. You're, you, you can be overconfident, but you've also kind of hedged your bets by putting money aside. Okay, guilty. Uh, this is like you spend, but then you feel bad about it. So you go, okay, I make a purchase. I've been racked by guilt afterwards. Uh, so you don't actually stop yourself from doing it. You just think like, okay, I'm going to feel bad uh, for being too indulgent. I wish I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have spent on that. This is a problem again with the saver. They fit. They, it's so they really don't want to spend the money. <laughs> so when they do spend the money, they're like, no, oh, you know, I wish I did. Was that a good idea? I hope I bought the right thing. I wonder if it's going to last. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have bought that. I should have spent a, a bought a different model. Did I do enough research? Is it? And again, the provider, um, they worry about, you know, should they have spent things on themselves? Maybe they should have bought things for somebody else. Or are they going to have enough money for, to provide for other people because they've spent money on themselves? So again, um, if you want to like not be guilty, frequent check-ins with your money uh, and your credit score, just to make sure everything's fine, can can help you overcome those guilty feelings. It's, it's okay to spend uh, as long as you're not overspending. Um, so if you've got a budget, you know that you've like budgeted for things like, you know, those new shoes or a new coat or something like that. Uh, if that's already built into things, um, then uh, you won't start having these emotions, you know. Okay, uh, consumerist, this is quite common, again, with the free spirit and the celebrity. Uh, it's it's very difficult as well with kind of social media and um, targeted advertising. You could have just searched for something on Amazon or Google something, and then literally that product will chase you around everywhere you go saying, hey, you know, <laughs> do you still want me? <laughs> Don't you want to buy me? Um, so it's really difficult to kind of escape this because marketing is so targeted. Um, and if you do have a tendency to kind of want those things or to um, want to the feeling of freedom to buy these things, the only real solution is a social media cleanse. Um, so that could be going through things that you've uh, subscribed to or signed up to or follow that is literally just temptation. Now, this is like a cold turkey thing. If you want to do it completely, then just literally get rid of all of those things. Um, it will stop you spending money um it will break you away from all of those buy this now buy this now temptation um another way of doing it is just making sure you know how much you're spending on particular stuff so again in the finning app you can track certain categories you can track how much you're spending in certain things uh you will be able to see that you'll get feedback so that you can rein that in okay last one is uh emotional spending um this is the habit of spending based on how you feel, um, not on what you need. So, hey, you know, you just, um, I don't know, got a promotion at work, okay? Uh, it's time to treat yourself for a new pair of shoes. Bit bored? Um, maybe I'll just kind of browse the web uh, and look for stuff to, to, to buy. Uh, worried about an interview? Maybe like buying a new laptop or something like that will just make you feel more professional. Uh, or, you know, maybe you just need a new phone for, for this new job that you're going to or whatever, uh, or some new clothes or whatever. Um, again, this is more like your anxiety driving your spending. Um, really common in the free spirit because um, it's your emotional spending really that's being driven. Um, now there's some kind of deeper functionality within fit in so we have a lot of stuff around card control so if you 
connected to your cards or linked to another account, um, you can block that card to be used on certain things. So it could be, you can use it in a store, but you can't use it for, for like online spending. So it allows you to selectively block like where you're spending your, your money. So if you did find yourself in temptation of going, okay, I'm just going to slip by now, um, you're literally blocking yourself. And just a, a little bit of reminder to see yourself say, hang on a minute. And you can unblock it super easy um, if you really do want that thing, but it just gives you that double check to um, make you think twice about that emotional spending. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed uh, that overview of like the different money personalities and the uh, spending habits. Any questions you want to ask me about your money habits um, or your money type, uh, then feel free to ask. Um, if we haven't really got any questions, we've got like one final activity um, to go through which is like a kind of cool down exercise. Uh, and this just helps us kind of improve the, the finning product a bit better. There is a question that's come. I'll just read it out. Hey John, yep. I pay my bills late. I do not know why. And by the time it's time to pay, I'm short. Yeah, bills can be, be like really, really kind of problematic. Um, so the, the, the easiest way to do it, and it, it's, I mean, the, the best thing to do, but it can be quite admin intensive, is literally to kind of move all of your bills so that they're timed to be paid when you get paid. Um, so the, the difficulty is when you get like lots of bills, like at the end of the month, um, when you, you're already kind of running short on money. So um, really, ideally, you need to kind of time, certainly the big bills, but um, ideally all bills, so that they're paid within like three or four days of you getting salary into your account. And then with, so within that three or four days, you look at your account and you look at your overall balance and you can see, okay, this is actually what you've got left. Because without that, your balance is not really showing you what you've got left because you don't really know what the bills are and you're never really aware of it. So the best thing to do really is to kind of move and synchronize all of those bills. And this is the kind of thing we're looking for in terms of like future functionality for Finin is like automating that bill payment so that we, all of that is kind of managed for you. And it's also really super easy to switch and get better deals. Um, this is kind of things that we're thinking of on the roadmap. Uh, there is another question. Uh, the presentation was great, enjoyed it. My money type is saver, so how can I psychologically trick myself for a balanced life? Thanks. Um, I mean, to be honest, like you're lucky being a saver, Alex. Um, it's like one of the, you know, it is one, it's probably the most balanced type. What was your like secondary type, if you don't mind me asking? Provider, okay, yeah, you're like, I don't know, you're, yeah, okay, you're super safe, care, big hug, you know, you just want to like look after everybody uh, and be a power of strength. Um, I mean, you know, the, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's more, and, and if you're, if you feel as though you're not, you're not looking after yourself or you're not getting things that you, you necessarily want, then the best thing to do is put his budget for wants rather than as well as needs. So set yourself up a savings goal to like, um, you know, put some money aside. So maybe every, every three months you have a pot of money that is just like, Alex, I'm going to go out and I'm just going to spend this. And you are spending it like guilt free. It's what it was for. It was saved but it was saved for you um, and you can go out and spend money on whatever you're probably going to spend it on taking a load of friends out because you're a provider um, <laughs> but you know if that's what makes you feel good then that's fine yeah any more questions at all there's one um, how does one go for celebrity to lead a balanced life so i think it's getting the balance right between um so there's a saying in England, which is poor man buys twice. Um, so uh, sometimes with the free spirit, you can get people saying, I'm just going to buy the latest thing and buy something that's cool and so on. 
to be like a really cool celebrity, um, like my partner is, is, is kind of like a celebrity and a saver. So she will, she still has, um, uh, like a, a, a fur coat that her mother had in the 1960s. Now this was an expensive fur coat. Yeah. But this fur coat is like 60 years old. Yeah. So she just really looked after it. So if you're a celebrity, nothing wrong with buying like super high end expensive stuff, but buy things that are like classics, like not too like super, super fashionable, not that you think are going to have a lifespan. Um, and you know, and, and, and really look after it. Yeah. So you're buying those, those kind of, you're kind of getting the balance right between your needs and your wants. So you want the, the super high end stuff, but you're also fulfilling a need because you're making that stuff last way into the future. Um, nothing wrong with buying high end. Um, just make sure you look after it and make it last. Don't get in the habit of like buying high end every six months. It's, it's not sustainable unless you really are a celebrity and you have the money. I do. We're just going to flip into the, um, the final task. This is just to, and we call it this jobs to be done. It's just to kind of help us understand the roadmap of Finim a little bit. Um, so again, it's a voting kind of activity works the same as the first one. Click on the link, uh, in the chat. Uh, and then click on the uh, the blue dots. Uh, and what we're trying to do is understand where people's needs are. Uh, so imagine uh, the Finning app could do absolutely any of these things. Uh, we uh, we want to know which ones are the most, which was the three most things that you would need the most help with, given who you are. It's a slightly long list. There's 12 things. Um, spend a bit of time reading them. Just choose three. Uh, where, that you feel would add the most value to you uh, in terms of uh, managing your money better and having better financial well-being. So there's there's lots of spend ones at the front, like budgeting, being more mindful or aware of where your money's going. Savings ones like building up an emergency fund. You might have debt or loan problems, you might have credit card problems. Maybe that's like, I really want to fix that. Uh, it might be about, okay, I just want to go on holidays. I never managed to save up for these things. How do I do that? Um, it could be about these longer term, like scary big goals. How am I ever going to save enough money for this? Or it could be like you already have some savings and you just want to get better returns on those savings and investments and like really start kind of laddering up your, your, your long term future savings. Yeah, I mean, this is like building up emergency funds to fall back on is, is something that most people kind of just don't do. And it is probably the thing that has the most impact on your well-being and on your worry. Just even if you've just got like a few um, thousand saved, uh, it can completely change how you think about any situation and all can, can also make you spend less. Um, so this is like super, super important and it's kind of what Finan is designed to do. Um, so it's really designed to start looking at your money and making sure you take a proportion of that and keep it for yourself. Got more saving stuff. Rewards and discounts on the roadmap, looking at uh, how to bring that to life so that whenever you use your Finan card, you're getting some kind of value from that using it or special discounts. Building up long-term savings, what's Finan's designed for. Being more aware and mindful of your spendings. Again, we've got like spend alerts, budget controls and so on to help you do that. Uh, just going to go to the bottom and see which ones people like don't really want help with. So that's good. Looks like there's nobody with like, you know, big loan or debt problems or nobody that wants to admit it um, on the, on the upvote. Budgeting again is a funny, is a funny thing. Some people just want to kind of, some people want to, do everything in a spreadsheet like extreme savers. Some people are just quite happy keeping a loose track of it. And Finan lets you do both. You can either track your spending or you can go, okay, this is my budget. 
um, I want to stick to it. So caters from both types. Okay, so I think that's probably all of the votes we've got in. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed the kind of uh, the tour into the money personalities. I hope you learned a little bit more about like what's driving you when you're spending your money. Have a little think next time. Why am I doing this? Is it because like I want the, you know, to feel cool by having this? Is it just because I just want to do it? I just want to feel free. Uh, is it because you, you want to, um, you, you just want to give to people. You're just, you know, you're just a provider. Um, yeah. Uh, or uh, is it, um, I've forgotten the fourth type myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it because you're like, you actually don't want to spend and you just want to keep the money for yourself. Okay. So that's all folks. Um, thank you very much. We're going to be having some more money talks. We'll get a bit more in depth into some of these things. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll send out like the money questionnaire again. So you can, you can do it again. You can have a little bit more think about it. We'll send out a presentation, I think, as well. Um, and please kind of share it more broadly when we send that out so that uh, more people become aware of, like, um, the, the idea behind money personalities and, you know, more people know about it. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, John. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks so much for joining in, everybody. Uh, I guess that's the end uh, of this particular webinar. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, go ahead, we will be sharing out, uh, you know, putting out this particular uh, personality test for all of you to share to your friends and find out what kind of, uh, you know, uh, what kind of spending habits they have, what it talks about them and helping them save better too. Um, look forward to FinIn being launched. And uh, yeah, that's all I'd like to say. Thanks everybody.